Welcome back, friends. I have a new business news story that you need to know about. So this is an article that appeared this week in Forbes magazine and is titled COVID-19 has changed the housing market forever. Here's where Americans are moving and why. And I thought this was a really great article. It's kind of long, so I'm just going to hit the highlights for you. But it's really interesting. You know, I've seen all of these YouTube videos recently about everybody is moving out of the cities. Why are people moving out of the cities? And there's this mass migration to the suburbs. So we're going to kind of look at that and try to figure out what is going on. So what this guy is doing is he's pulling the data from a whole bunch of real estate websites and going out and talking to people in the real estate industry and pulling all this data together to give us this snapshot of, you know, here in October, what is happening. Here it says, Americans live in the new pandemic normal and as a result will play a huge X factor in which cities and states will experience growth, demand, and price appreciation over the next three to five years and which ones will stagnate and lose out. More broadly for large metropolises like Washington DC, New York City, and Philadelphia, the answers risk slowing or even reversing a wave of gentrification and wildly profitable downtown, downtown revitalization that's been accelerating since the Great Recession. So he's bringing up that, you know, we're dealing with the pandemic and people are leaving these big cities. So here's, here's what he says about the data. He says, by every metric, Americans are moving faster now than they were before the pandemic. Page per property views on real estate platforms like Realtor and Zillow are up over 50% year over year almost everywhere. Inventory in America's 100 top metro markets have been shrinking since March, along with days on market and the gap between list to sales price. So... 50% year over year, that's huge. That means that, <laughs> just like what he says, Americans are moving faster now than they were before the pandemic. Everyone is moving. Here he has an image of Boston. And, you know, these big cities in the Northeast is one of the big questions that people have. What is happening to these great, famous cities? And he addresses it here. He says, the Northeast real estate market remains strong, despite all omens otherwise, since New York City was the original epicenter of the COVID-19 flight back in March. And the overall low tax, lower regulation trends across the country that aren't in the region's favor. According to Realtor.com's most recent data, Five of America's hottest real estate markets are in New England, plus New York State, Melrose, Portland, Hudson, Worcester, and Rochester, each of which ranked in the top 10 across more than three categories, including lowest days on the market, list to sales ratio, or page views per property. So people might be living these, uh, people might be leaving these city centers like New York, but it doesn't mean that they're leaving the region. They're just moving away into these more suburban areas. And here's an image of Columbus, Ohio. And so the article goes on to talk about some of the places that people are moving. Um, here it says, at the top of Zillow's list as of October 2020, three of America's hottest real estate markets are in Ohio, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Dayton. Boise and Salt Lake City also made the list along with Stamford, Connecticut, outside of New York City. Austin came in number one. Louisville, Kentucky, Memphis, Tennessee, Honolulu, and Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa were at the bottom on Zillow's aggregate list, though Zillow's economists were quick to point out that in today's market, that means less good. And now here is the big quote of the article, in my opinion. Even the coolest markets in America right now are generally performing well and tilted in favor of sellers, says Cheryl Young, senior economist at Zillow. So they're saying even the bad markets are good in real estate right now. You know, everyone is moving. Everyone is changing their real estate properties. Now, what everyone really wants from these articles is what is the dirt? Who is at the bottom of the list? That's what people really want to know in these articles. So at the end of the article, he gets into it. He says, who's notably absent from all the data? 
And he says, not a single city in California or the Pacific Northwest ranked anywhere near the top of anyone's best of lists in terms of where Americans are moving, which suggests that the effects of COVID's first flight from coastal cities last March may be fossilizing permanently. New York City, Long Island, Northern New Jersey, Honolulu, Chicago, and Philadelphia were also conspicuously in the basement, reinforcing America's net emotional migration away from high-priced real estate markets as well as high-tax, high-lockdown urban locations. That is a pretty stark reality for some of these metropolitan areas as the big losers in the current real estate market. So overall, you know, my take in this article, I, you know, I love to read stuff like this because it gives you an overall idea of kind of what's happening in the economy, which boils down into all kinds of business decisions that you're making today, in no matter what industry you're in. And what it's telling me is that people are moving. You know, people are reflecting, they're looking at their situations, and they're making decisions. And from my perspective, that's actually very positive. When you're dealing with re recessions, and especially the pandemic, it sounds like people are responding to the new normal. They're reorganizing their finances, they're reorganizing your, their lives, and that's what you want in a recession. You want people to react and respond and move to where they should be moving to and making life choices and changes in their life. You know, if you follow the channel, you know, I've recently moved too. I recently moved from New Mexico to Arizona. And, you know, there's a whole number of reasons of why I moved. Uh, but everybody has their own list. Well, you know what? I'll give you my list. I'll give you my list of why I personally moved. So I moved from New Mexico to Arizona. There's a couple of reasons. I just announced on the channel I was starting my own business. So Arizona seemed to be a better, more business-friendly place to do that. Lower taxes, easier regulation. The economy is much bigger in Arizona, so that's helpful. And personal reasons too. I mean, I have family and friends here in Arizona. I don't have any family in New Mexico, so that played into it too. So all those things together made me think about my situation and make the best decision. Like this was the right time to move. And I think a lot of people across the country are doing that exact thing. So I hope you found this article helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you have additional accounting questions, you can always email me through my website, wolvesandfinance.com, and I will reply with my rates. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Let's go out and make some money.